So two things are global. One thing is the globe and it's all, all its problems. And the second thing is the church, which is global. The church is global. The church is everywhere. Who's the church? The body of Christ. The body of Christ is everywhere. You will be my witnesses. And that is true. They're all over the place. I'll point that out in just a bit. So when the church steps out into the world to serve the world or to reach the world or to love the world, we have to look at what they need from us. What are the global problems? What are the global issues, not just of one people or a few million people, but what is happening all around the world that an all around the world entity can reach? All around the world entity can reach. One country can't solve this, even the UN can't solve this, no armies can solve this, uh, no nations can solve. This is something that calls the church, which is global, to reach. What are those five big global giant, giants? What are the things that the whole world suffers? I'm sure there are many things, but here are five global giants, global problems, something you'll see in every nation, every tribe, every kindred, every corner of the earth. Number one, spiritual emptiness. Spiritual emptiness, Kalipan, Koklapan, spiritual empty, emptiness, darkness. Everything is meaningless, utterly meaningless. What do, you, what do people get out for all their hard work? Generations come and go, but nothing really changes. Everything is weary, tiresome. No matter what, how much we see, we're never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. Ecclesiastes 1, right? Spiritual emptiness. No matter which nation, tribe, kindred you go, people need the Lord. Number two, self-serving leaders, every culture. Every culture, every place you go, Every tribe, every people group has leaders that are corrupt, leaders that are self-serving, leaders that are uh, uh, egotistical, right? So self-serving leaders. Jesus, observed, uh, Jesus said, you ob you've observed the godless leaders throw their weight around, and when they get a little power, it quickly goes to their head. That's a message translation again of Mark chapter 10, verse 42. A little later, Jesus says, for a son of man has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. How are we doing so far? Everybody's okay? You following with me? Tracking with me? Everybody got notes? Okay. We have Hindi notes as well if you need Hindi notes. Uh, you just need to raise your hand and somebody will take note. Okay. Number three is extreme poverty. Extreme poverty. Poverty is everywhere. Poverty is everywhere. Even in Switzerland there's poverty. But extreme poverty, there's no excuse for extreme poverty. India has enough food, India has enough wealth to give six meals a day to every one of its 1.2 billion people. There is enough food. We are 80% agricultural for crying out loud. We have the money. The money is in Switzerland. The money is outside the country. The money is all over the place. The money is in 20% of the hands, in fact, 3% of the hands of the people, right? So you can get into the economics, but the point of the matter is that we do have enough money. We do have enough wealth. So there is no good reason for a poverty person. It's just not right. Is someone hearing this? Is someone hearing this? Is someone feeling this? It is just not right for anybody to be poverty stricken in our country. It's not right. And if Jesus was walking the earth and he met that person, there was something he would do about it. Now, if the church is walking and met that person, what would the church do about it? Sorry, I can't help it. I have to preach. So even in the middle of training, I go off into a little bit of preaching. You don't mind, no? All right, okay. So extreme poverty, extreme poverty. We're talking about severe levels of poverty where there's, uh, and not just starvation, but the whole issue of never being able, listen to me, look at me, never being able to get out of that cycle. You, you know what I'm talking about? Just when a little bit comes in, you have to pay it off somewhere. You have to give it off somewhere. Someone steals it from you. Someone steals it. Some time ago, I told you the story of that lady who was sleeping, who doesn't want to sleep in the, in the shelter, the women's shelter that the government has made, the hundred uh, ones that, uh, that are in our, in our city, because she gets robbed at night. And the cops are with them on the whole uh, thing. So you can't even hold on to what you've got. Extreme poverty. Number four is pandemic sickness. Pandemic sickness is sicknesses that can be avoided. <clears throat> they are vast, they're global, but they can be avoided. They, like malaria, for instance. Malaria has been eradicated completely in some countries. Yet, in our country, we export it. Right? We don't just live with it. We export it. We get the germs. We give out, we package them. We sneak them into other countries. So... Pandemic sickness is talking about things that don't need to. You don't need to be sick with malaria, but you are still sick. Why can't we handle it? And we'll talk about that in just a bit. And then the last one is the deprivation of, 
of, uh, of education, the deprivation of education. All said and done, 21st century or, no, or what, children, girls in our country still don't get education. They still don't have the right to education. There are little girls that are growing up that are not allowed to go to school. There are boys also that are not able to go to school, not allowed to go to school, but looking at the next generation, it's not looking good. So we're talking about educate the next generation. We're talking about educating the next generation. So that's a problem, a deprivation, serious deprivation of education. In our country, two evils have occurred. Education has become uh, monetized, it has become commercialized. Education, it's a right to everybody's life. Everybody needs to be educated. You can't mo commercialize that. So now you're looking at, what, eight lakhs a year for fees just to get a degree? What nonsense is that? So who can study there? Those who have the eight lakhs. Isn't that unfair on everybody else? It's just really unfair, especially there are people studying in other countries who are paying less. There are people studying in developed countries who are paying less than that. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Then you say, why don't, 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 don't go there, go to DU. <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it. So now it's a competition. And those who can afford it go to the top, everybody else goes to the bottom. What if you can't afford it? So education has now been classified and has been given to those who can afford it. Wrong, wrong, somebody scream, don't, don't. It's wrong, the church needs to have a voice in these matters, it's wrong. Stupid, stupid things we are able to tweet and, and talk about and get worked up about. Things that have no relevance to the rest of the world are not going to change the world and not going to change anybody's life. Those are the things we argue and we rant about on, on Facebook, Twitter and everywhere else. The things that really matter to the heart of God are what gets left behind. Deprivation of education, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There is one group that is global and that can address and must address everyone and that is the church. That is the church. Who is the church? It's not the building. It's the people who love God, fear God, and want to do as he says. Those who are bought by the blood of Jesus. 